D converted man here and today I'm going to take a break from analyzing videos and instead just talk to you about informal logic and specifically today I'm just going to describe the different types of dialogue we have and explain their differences and what they're about and provide you a bit of information and my hope is that by doing this I'll encourage you to Go learn more about informal logic yourself. I realize it's not everybody's forte. It's not something that everyone's super interested in as I am. But I think we should all know a little bit something more about it than we know now. And I think learning is always good. Even if it's learning about something we're not that interested in, uh, knowledge is power. And the more we know, the less likely we are to be taken advantage of. So I'm just going to jump right into it. So let me cover the six types of dialogue that exist. First of all, persuasion or persuasionary. This is the type of dialogue that I'm most often engaged in. The initial situation is a conflict of opinions. The participant's goal is to persuade the other party, and the goal of the dialogue is to resolve or clarify the issue. In my case, the issue is often that somebody has used a logical fallacy or multiple logical fallacies, and I'm trying to persuade him of just that simple fact alone, and because of that fact that I should and everyone should be skeptical of their conclusions. Unfortunately, people, for whatever reason, don't want to engage in that dialogue as yet, but my hope is that eventually somebody will engage in that dialogue and we can actually get into a persuasionary dialogue rather than me just telling them why they're wrong. Inquiry dialogue is the the initial situation is a need to have proof. The participant's goal is to find and verify evidence and the goal of the dialogue is to prove or disprove the hypothesis. One example of inquiry dialogue might be the uh, courtroom situation where you find yourself uh, in trouble for something that you may or may not have done, but the need to have proof is on both sides. You need to have proof that you weren't there, or they need to have proof that you were there. And so you have to prove or disprove that hypothesis with whatever evidence or witnesses you can bring into uh, trial and show that. Negotiation type of dialogue, uh, the initial situation is a conflict of interest. The participant's goal is get what you most want, and the goal of the dialogue is a reasonable settlement both can live with. So often we see negotiations with companies that, you know, they want this, they want that, or even something as simple as, you know, uh, who's going to pay for the dinner or something like that. So we have a negotiation dialogue, and it might be as simple as, well, let's just do 50-50. Neither person is totally satisfied with the outcome, but it's something that both people can live with. The type of dialogue information seeking, the initial situation is to is you need information, and the participant's goal is to acquire or give information. And the goal of the dialogue is to exchange information. It all sounds somewhat redundant, but actually I am engaging in information seeking dialogue right now. Even though I'm not seeking information, I am seeking to give information. Deliberation. Is, the initial situation is a dilemma or practical choice. The participant's goal is to coordinate goals and actions, and the goal of the dialogue is to decide the best course of action. You might see deliberation take place within an ethical debate. Uh, people debating ethics or talking about ethics are really engaging in deliberation. They're facing the proposed dilemma rather than a real dilemma, like, okay, what would we do in X situation? And you do all these thought experiments. You might have heard some of the more famous ones, like a train is coming, and you have to switch the rail from one way to another. One's going to kill one person, uh, whereas the other is going to kill ten people. Which do you switch the lever on? And most people say that, you know, they would take the lesser people choice they would take the one person over the ten and then there's other thought experiments like this that really help us deal with ethics and iron out what ethics is and what it's about and so that would be where you would have some deliberation in that sort of uh, setting 
Erastic dialogue. Whenever people hear the word argument, I think that they most often think of erastic dialogue. Um, when you hear the word argument, your brain just tends to think about people yelling and screaming at each other, and that is what erastic dialogue is. So the initial situation is a personal conflict. The participant's goal is to verbally hit out the opponent, and the goal is to reveal the deep, deeper basis of the conflict. Unfortunately, one of the sayings I like to use is, you can't win an erastic dialogue. You might get at that goal, you might reveal the deeper core basis of it, but because of the emotions and because of the word exchange, you may never get there. Um, once you've involved emotions into the thing, uh, it really clouds everything. It really messes things up. And I don't like to engage in erratic dialogue. I just find no point to it. It's just like, what's the point? What's, what is it that you have? What is it that you're upset about? What is wrong? And what I've noted is that most often when we get angry or upset, it's usually because we want somebody to do a certain thing and they're or not to do a certain thing and they are or are not doing that thing and that upsets us and we have to realize that we can't control other people we can only control ourselves and another reason why people get angry or upset is they can't control the external world they can't control what's outside of themselves so all of these potential issues that can make us angry or upset make it that the goal of an erastic dialogue is very hard to get to and sometimes impossible because we ourselves don't know why we're upset or what the goal is. What What is it? You know, we started arguing about whose turn it was to take out the trash, but really the core problem is that uh, I think that you're shitting on me. And I didn't even know that that was what was at the core of that. You know, and it's so buried in my subconscious that I might never get there. So, an erratic dialogue to me is just not worth engaging in. And if you find yourself in it, I think that the only way to deal with it is to remind yourself you can only control yourself, you can't control others, you can't control the external world, and you have to decide to let those emotions go and instead use logic to formulate the answers and go with that. Alright, so those are the different types of dialogue and I hope that I've illuminated some of these ideas and issues for you. As I said, I'm most familiar with persuasionary dialogue. That's the one I'm engaged in most. Uh, although I'm used to all of these on one level or another, we all use these dialogues in different ways and in different points of our life. It's worth noting that within informal logic, it's a formal fallacy to shift the type of dialogue that you're engaged in. Now, if you're used to watching debates, then you'll note that most often after they're done debating, they'll engage in a information-seeking dialogue either with each other or with the audience. They'll ask each other questions or the audience will ask them questions questions or maybe even both in some cases and that's fine because both participants understand that this is going to be a dialogue shift that's going to happen at a certain point in time so it's not a formal fallacy in that case because both people understand that we're switching the dialogue it's only a formal fallacy when one of the participants doesn't know that it's going to happen. So if we're in persuasionary dialogue and all of a sudden you start calling me a poopy head, well, now we're in erastic dialogue and I didn't know that we were going to switch into erastic dialogue, so you've committed a formal fallacy. And as such, I now get to be skeptical of whatever conclusions you have because you've committed a fallacy. So any questions about informal logic or formal logic or logic in general, uh, feel free to ask them, and I will answer them as best as I am able. I hope my humble video here was able to inform you new things you didn't know, and I hope that it will get you interested in learning about logic yourself. Thanks for listening. Please let me know what you think about this sort of tangent video in the uh, comments below, whether you would like me to try to teach you more stuff about logic or whether you just want me to continue analyzing videos 
and never do something like this again. I appreciate all your input. Thanks so much. Keep asking critical questions, using critical analysis, and asking questions. Be willing to analyze what you hold most dear. For if you're able to do that, and you're able to think that you might be wrong, then you're able to learn. And knowledge is power. The more we know, the better off we are as individuals and as a society. Number of logical fallacies in the... Oh, wait. No, no, sorry. Never mind.